Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Puck Monkey channel. Today, I'm joined by Steve. And Steve, why don't you introduce yourself to everyone? Hey, guys. Uh, name's Steve. Been watching the Panthers my whole life, uh, but religiously started to watch them about three to four years ago, um, right when we signed Quenville and we signed Wabrowski. Uh, my friend said, hey, man, I know you're in the middle of the desert and you have nothing to do with your life, but you should watch the Panthers because they're going to be really good this year. So um, started to watch them religiously ever since. Um, and I try to do my best to watch a lot of NHL hockey, uh, just in general to like overcompensate for the years that, uh, that I've missed watching hockey. Um, try to learn a lot about the game, watch a lot of off the puck. Um, my, my weakest probable point is the Western Conference. Um, I do watch a lot of the, the Canadian teams in the West, but um, I typically don't watch uh, any of the others. And as a Panther fan, what are some players you like? Like, who are your favorite players? Immaculate vibes only, bro. Come on. Um, I'm a real big fan of Mackenzie Weger. I like I like players that work hard um, both off and on the puck. I, I like Ryan Lomberg. I like Noel Achari. Uh, I appreciate Noel Achari's typical sacrifice of his body, even if that leaves him on the IR for the whole year. Uh, I just like people that are that are smart more off the puck than than on the puck. No, that's not a dig at Uyghur. <laughs> and overall, we saw a lot of changes happen throughout the Panthers roster. Where do you expect them to finish? I'll be honest with you. I expect us to be top two in the Atlantic. I don't expect us to be fighting for a second string wild card finish. Like I just bet up top two in the Atlantic, uh, whether that's Toronto whether that's Tampa, whether that's Ottawa, <laughs> whether that's Detroit, who knows, don't care. Um, I expect top two. I do expect Boston to regress a little bit because of um, the, the lack of big name signings and free agents with a mix of, did they even announce their coach yet? I yeah, it was like some there. some guy basically. Like it wasn't some like big. You know, they didn't go yeah, after. Yeah, just some guy, bro. Yeah, it, that's guy. really like I, I don't even remember his name. I just know they went after someone. They fired Cassidy and went after someone. So I, I think I think there's just there's more question marks over Boston's head than there are question marks over the Panthers. Uh, do I think Ottawa did enough to pass us? I don't know. To be yeah, honest. I I was a very young team. Any of their players could easily slump. You could look at Tim Stusla going to what his third year now. He's been trying to play for a contract, but he's young. I mean, he's only 21. He was drafted in the 2020 draft. They have a lot of question marks with their defense depth. I mean, you look at Thomas Shabbat and look at some of their young guys like Sanderson, but they don't have any of those like good transition two or three type of guys. I so, think yeah. what you'll see with Ottawa is. Hopefully not for Ottawa fans, of course, but uh, what you may see with Ottawa is something similar to what you've seen with Chicago, where they load up on a lot of big names, but will those big names be able to carry them? I, I don't know. Like, yeah. who would have thought that Chicago would have ended up the way they did this year? Yeah, I mean, it's almost like the opposite effect now. Chicago is a, a team with a bunch of other players, like a Kane at Taves, and now Ottawa's opposite. They're a very, very young team who's one of their only, who their oldest player is, is now Claude Giroux. And, that's by a long mile. I call them toes. It's a W, not a V. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Pat obviously, yeah. Patrick Roy. Patrick Roy, yeah. Jonathan Toys. <laughs> toes. <laughs> all right, cool. So with all this movement, what are your thoughts on the four big players that the Panthers lost in free agency? I am going to be honest with you. I do not care about them. I do not care. Let's look at context of what we lost. So uh, I don't consider Giroux and I don't consider Sherratt losses. I consider them playoff losses. We were what, 20, 30 points, something crazy ahead of Columbus by the time that we signed Claude Giroux and Ben Sherratt. They did not help us push. They did not push us over the hump to make the playoffs, right? My biggest concern with this roster is make the playoffs and then somebody wake up Barkov and wake up Hubie, right? So I look at who got us to the playoffs not who was there in the playoffs. So take those two, erase them. I don't care. You never existed anyway. And we have two people that are missing. Noel Achari, who spent the entire year on injured reserves because he got into a scrum in Tampa in preseason, right? Is that a loss? I don't, I don't think so. I, I genuinely don't think so. I'm, 
I have a Noel Achari jersey, okay? And I, I'm genuinely not going to miss him. Um, he's a great guy, but am I so pessimistic that losing Noel Achari then pushes us into losing a second wild card spot? No, I, I'm not that delusional. Uh, then you look at Mason Marchment. You have a player who was non-existent at the start of the year. He was put on lines with Barkov. He was thrown around the lineup. Then halfway through the season, they made this magical line of Sam Reinhart, Mason Marchman, and Anton Lundell. And the last, I think it was something like 20 to 30 games, because he missed a lot of it during injury, he, he just ignited the spark, right? But again, look at the last 20 games. We, we're still 20, 30 points above Columbus. I'm not missing him. The last person we are not talking that we have not talked about yet is Duclair. He's on injured reserve half the year. Cool. He comes back half a year later. Not worried about it. Um, what are my thoughts on the the guys that are coming in? I don't know. They haven't played a game for us yet. How can you have an opinion on a guy who hasn't played with us yet? I, I think it's I think it's a little bit of a nuance to go out of your way and make predictions based off theory crafting of like, well, his style of play mixes with this, mixes with that. It's like, cool, you do all that nonsense, and then the kid gets into a fight in the first preseason game, and he's out half the year. What was the whole point of that? So my biggest thing for mock lineups is let's just wait and see. Yeah, it's all up to Palmer Reese. We can't do anything about it. And yeah, now, so I don't, I don't have yeah. any, like, well, let's put Barkov on the third line and really unlock his potential. Like, nah, dude, I don't care. Yeah. We'll, we'll see what it is, and then uh, you and I will have discussions, obviously, during the season of, like, what's not working out, what's working out, and where to move them. But – and all honesty, I don't think we can really make that assessment yet because it, it's a bunch of potential. It's a bunch of people that were supposed to be really, really good that didn't quite find the right situation, and now we're, we're giving them a show of steel. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, we've seen the success with Duclair or Bennett, who hasn't worked out, and you know they sprout into great NHL players. But we just have to wait and see until game one, and then once we start going on and on, we'll just see. Like, we I can't think, judge yeah. based off of – a single minute. I mean, play a single minute on the ice. We have to not be delusional because he has missed. What was that kid, that winger that we signed from New Jersey, or he went to New Jersey? Gustav something. Nikita Gusev. He was like some Gusev. guy from the KHL. He had like a high we potential, but then Nudavara, right? Like, let's let's acknowledge that Zito has missed in these scenarios, right? A yeah. lot of people talk about you know the Sam Bennett's, the Duclairs, but the Verhages, but. He, he has missed tapered expectations. I'm not expecting all three of the projected guys to, to, to hit, but maybe one or two of them hit. And the way I see it as well, you look at those, the, those three lines. You have Verhege, Barkov. Those two are stars. They're amazing players. Then you have Bennett, Huberto. Well, on Verhege second. is. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> and then on the third, you have Reinhardt Lundell. I mean, you look at the Toronto Maple Leafs. I mentioned a little bit earlier in a different video. They only have two great players, and then you have Michael Bunting there. And then same with the second line. You have Tavares, Nylander, and then you just have fill in anyone. It could be anyone. It could be a rookie. could be – so that's how I see these. If they succeed, especially with Cousins and Ballsters, they have RFA rights, and you can sell them and trade them. So that kind of brings into next offseason. What could you see as Papa Uyghur, Huberto, and Knight extension as those are the three big guys? All right, Panther fans. I went on to your favorite website – capfriendly.com slash teams slash Panthers. Uh, I counted out our projected cap hit um, for the 2023-2024 season. So this is next season when QB, Uyghur, Knight, all UFA, RFAs, whatever. Uh, we have 26 mil in free cap. So I, I don't know why we are freaking out. I don't know why everyone's panicking. Let's say worst comes to worst. Give, give, I'm not saying this. Do not flame me. Worst comes to worst. Give UB a 10 mil deal. Give Uyghur an 8 mil deal. And you still have more than enough money to sign Knight. You have essentially, well, because the cap raise, mm -hmm. um, what's well, that, 8 mil? 8 mil to sign Knight. And then some of the other <laughs> some of the other people, right? Um, it's all dependent on, on who shows up, right? So uh, yeah. Hornquest, maybe a 1 to 2 mil deal. Right, because he's a fourth liner, you should be paying him dog crap. You have uh, Colin White and Rudolph Balsers. Oh my, little man. Uh, then you have Goose uh, Gudis. 
Carlson and then Mark Stahl, if that, <laughs> right? Yeah. So it's like you have the cap next year to work with all those players, even if you are absolutely stupid and give Uyghur and Hubie a max a max contract for what they are worth. Yeah. And you so can I, see, yeah. yeah. You can see that in those, next year, you're going to have those prospects have another year of development. We finally have our own AHL team. Like we're not finally, we, we weren't, not, we're not sharing our affiliate with Seattle like last season or two seasons ago with Tampa. We can finally see our guys develop. I mean, yeah. maybe we can see like so Sam Samuskevich or sort of try to make their way up in the lineup. And that's what you see with these contending teams. They, they, they can't keep everyone. Like Tampa lost a lot. That last yeah, but I mean, they lose a lot every year. And then what happens? They sweep yeah. us. <laughs> and they sweep us. They either sweep us or they go. They uh, put some players on LTIR and go over there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my biggest worry about Tampa is that everyone's like they're dead, they're done, they're dead, they're done. I'm like, I heard, I heard that a year ago, and they swept us. So. Yeah, exactly. It's, that's it's, that's yeah. You have to wait team and see. Is something else. I mean, it just every new guy they get it just works. Yeah. And I know a lot of Panther fans know you as the Uyghur guy. So, what are your thoughts on those? trade speculations of Mackenzie Weir and why or why we shouldn't trade him. Let's speak out loud for a second. Let's trade our starting goalie and a Norris voted top two defender, top what, 14 in the league? Yeah, probably. Top 14 in the league. Let's all trade both of them for a third line winger. Now say it without laughing. Say it without laughing. Let's trade our, our starting goaltender and our top two defensemen. There, okay. I mean, you look at Uyghur, he's the perfect complement to Aaron Ekblad. This Aaron Ekblad's Norris campaign hasn't, it was, it was started, it was engined by Mackenzie Uyghur. He was playing with Matheson, with Yandel. His point production was nowhere like this when he was with Uyghur. Let's, let's go into his stats uh, for this season, right? So 74 takeaways, uh, Hughes first on the team for that. Some, some of these stats are a lot harder to find and dig for. So some of them I do compare to franchise records. So some of them I have them, but like takeaways is not like a stat where I can't find out who led the Panthers in takeaways in 2004. It's just, it, it wasn't tracked properly back then. So uh, 74 takeaways first, 179 hits, which is second on the roster, of course, to do this, right? Yeah. That is also ninth of all time. That's the ninth highest hits in all time. We for, for the Panthers. All right. Yeah. Don't don't don't. <laughs> well, if I say all time, I'm talking about for the Panther franchise. Okay. We have 156 block shots. That's the fourth best all time and the best since 2010. Now, if my memory serves me correctly, we were kind of trash packed then, which explains why our shot blocks were so high. Um, I think we had like a small surge in, in 2012, right? With the yeah. auger and something yeah. like that. When that. Yeah, with like the end of Weiss and the end of, you know, those older yeah. guys. So we have uh, 1870 time on ice. That is first for the Florida Panthers. Mm. Uh, he was gassed, clearly. Uh, average time on ice is 23-22. That's actually second to Aaron Ekblad. Uh, Aaron Ekblad does get the power play. Therefore, Mackenzie Weger is not going to have more time. Then. And then he has the second plus or minus all time for the Florida Panthers. And first place was Gustav Forsling, who had one more point than him. So let's let's take all those stats together, right? So, yes, I, I understand the giveaways, right? Everyone makes that argument. He gives away the puck too much. Well, guess what? The, the other guy you're trying to give a contract to had the same amount of giveaways this season. Jonathan Huberdo, literally, what he some before the playoffs started, he was something like nine giveaways behind Uyghur. He caught him in the playoffs. Like, are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know, like their idea of trading Uyghur, what would you what would you even expect to get? Like you need either a play a, def- a young defenseman prospect or a player with contract with 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 term. Well, the problem is 31 NHL teams are smart and Panthers are not smart. So when you look at what look at the fan reaction, go on Twitter and just say. Just make up a rumor. Be like, I'm hearing reports of Mackenzie Weger to Edmonton, Mackenzie Weger to the Kings, Mackenzie Weger to literally any of the NHL teams. Their fan bases are losing their minds of Honestly, like yeah. getting a, such a great player. And it's like so frustrating to, for the Panther fan community to be so hyper focused on this guy and his mistakes when 
They compare him to people that make just as many mistakes. They just don't care to pay attention to it. So I'll give you an example, Panther fans. Let's go to go to game six. Go to 16-22 left in the second period. Washington is entering the zone at a three-on-two. Who pinches in that scenario? So we have Forsling and Uyghur. We were screaming to split up Ekblad and Uyghur, right? Forsling pinches in a three-on-two at the blue line and then leaves Uyghur in a three-on-one, and then they score. Why are you pinching in a, in a three-on-two? Why aren't you backskating and closing down the gap, right? But that's not highlighted. That is not a stat. That is not something that Panther fans are going to bitch about on Twitter. How many times did Brandon Montour give up on the play during the playoffs? Remember Sam Bennett? Remember when he got floored at mid-ice? What happened? What happened with uh, Brandon Montour? Do you remember? I, I don't know. I don't. Maybe you can remind he me. He gave up on the play. He took one step forward and was like, nah, never mind. Let me play hockey. And then he was out of position and they scored, right? What happened when um, the puck, when Uyghur thought the puck was iced? What happened? They, the Capitals scored. It was Kuznetsov with that stupid Did bird. Panther fans care? Did Panther no. fans care that Uyghur they, thought it was ice? Because they cared that Brandon Montour thought that he was going to fight someone. Like, you see where, like, it's all hypocritical? Yeah, that's like, you a, can, yeah. Yeah, you can pick There's and huge choose. discrepancies, yeah. You can pick and choose any Panther player in, in, throughout the whole season, and you can find holes in their game. You can find Brandon Montour getting beat. You can find Brandon Montour pinching when he's not supposed to pinch and then leaving his line mate out to dry. Like, there's mistakes everywhere. You can find examples in the Tampa Bay Lightning series of Ben Sherratt and Ekblad getting out muscled, right? What was the big concern with Uyghur in game one? Do you remember? Game of Tampa? Yeah. What happened in game one in Tampa? It might have been game one or game three. Do you remember the penalty? Oh, with Sherratt or with, with Uyghur? Kucherov. Oh, uh, no, I don't remember. Maybe you can remind me. So Kucherov enters the zone with the puck. Oh, yeah. Some silky one. ass yep. move. And, and then, then Uyghur got hooking or something like that. Uyghur went out to reach with the stick, and then Kucherov leaned into it. Yeah. And, and then drew a penalty, it. right? Yep. Uyghur pushed him to the outside to like sort of yeah. defeat the goal scoring chance. But uh, Kucherov is a professional and drew the penalty. What What happened? What happened? Literally thirty seconds later. What happened? Did the same move between. Later? I mean, Kucherov did the same move on that power play. That amazing highlight real goal. You know, top five goal in the playoffs who, against who Aaron, the... Ek, Aaron Ekblad and Ben Sherratt probably. Oh my God, you mean they do make mistakes? Holy crap, dude. I thought Uyghur was just really bad at defense. It, it's like, it's so ridiculous. And then you, at the end of the game, all you're hearing about is Uyghur drawing a penalty. Uyghur drawing a penalty. How many penalties did Forsling and Montour cost us, especially in that final game? Weren't they like the last two penalties? Probably. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if Montour was. It, it's frustrating because all you hear is five seconds. All you hear is five seconds, right? Who failed to clear the puck? Mackenzie Weger. Well, uh, Gustav Forsling probably on that play. Gustav Forsling failed to clear the puck on that play. And Kucherov rushed it behind the net, and we know how Reverse him. Reverse him. Mackenzie Weger fails to clear the puck, and then Forsling goes behind the net and chases him. Who do you think we hear about? Weger. Oh, no. So narratives are dumb. Got it. It's just like, that's what I love about hockey so much is because you can, it doesn't matter what anyone on Twitter says. You can go watch the play with your own eyes and make your own deductions if you understand the game properly. Yeah. And that's just like what I enjoy about the game. That's what and, I like about you. Like you, 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 you call the game as you see it in your own eyes. Everyone has their own perspective. You can look at Eric from the Flying Fluffy channel. He has his own views on his things. You have your own views. I have my own views. We see the game in different ways. I can see from a top down perspective on, you know, in the game real life, you probably get to see on your phone or on your computer. And yeah, these the stats are nuts. You, you, you don't compare a player with these historic stats to Matheson and you don't compare him to Gandal. It is ignorant. It is stupid. And it is selfish to do so. Yeah. Like, sure. He makes mistakes. Right. But like, how many times did you watch the Panthers this season with Aaron Ekblad and with Mackenzie Weger and you only heard about Weger making a mistake? Like yeah. they play together. Like, do you do you not know that yeah. they play together? Yeah. Like you can find Aaron Ekblad at fault for some things, right? Mm -hmm. it, halfway through the season, three fourths of the season, I, all the way up. I didn't check the end, but Aaron Ekblad actually led the Panthers in defensive zone giveaways. He he had like something like six or seven more giveaways than Uyghur. So and a lot of Uyghur's giveaways were offensively 
yeah. minded. They weren't defensive minded. And you can look at that as Weir's everyone's going to see Weir by the net because he's he's the guy chasing for the puck since Ekblad gave it away, and he's on that left side, and that's where you, you could have seen some of the goals that opponents score, and that's how people could associate with Weir being on that goals against. Panther fans, we got a stud. Pay him. I don't care. I don't care the money. I don't care how long. Pay him. He's the best thing that we can do. People keep mentoring Chikorin. What are we going to get for Chikorin? Exactly. You Have want to get Barkov for Chikorin? I'll get Barkov for Chikorin. You want Barkov? And Chikorin isn't better in Dan Uyghur, or just as good as Uyghur. I mean, Chikorin has those horrible offensive giveaways like Ekblad. You, you can find underlying issues with everyone. So, like, my, exactly. my biggest my biggest thing was, like, um, when I used to get in arguments with uh, Jaws from Flying Fluffy, I used to say – Name a defenseman in the NHL that does not do this. Name a perfect NHL defenseman. You can't name one, right? Kel McCarr still has his downsides, right? Adam Fox still has his downsides. You have to give and take with each player what they offer you and what you can get from them. And what do you think we get? We can. We, what do you think we are gives that a lot of other defensemen don't give? Well, I mean, it's takeaways, man. His block shots, like he's putting his body on the line every game. He's first in takeaways. He's first in block shots. What's a defender's job? You have to defend the puck. Explain no. Explain it to my two year old. What's a defender's job? No puck in back of net. So taking away the puck and blocking the puck are probably two of the most important aspects to a defender, and he's first in both of them. Yeah, he's no doubt a star in this league. You saw the Norris votes. You know the people. Outside of Florida, the media view him as an excellent defenseman, which is why you probably see. Even our media does. Our media, yeah, our media you look at, yeah, exactly. And you know the money's gonna be tight, especially you see Good Branson getting four million dollars. You could see like this, he he can. Would you have rather have Seth Jones or Mackenzie Weger? <laughs> well, I got a friend who doesn't talk nice things about Seth Jones every week, so not him. <laughs> exactly. I mean, Weger's gonna be getting a payday, but then again, we're the team who made him who we are. We're the one who drafted him in the seventh round. He's going to have loyalty to us. He likes playing here. He likes Ekblad. I've heard this one story of how Ekblad's morale was so down, but Uyghur was able to bring Ekblad's morale up, and that could have been to what made Ekblad a top 10 defenseman in this league. Every time I see the word Strigi, Uyghur, I just cringe. I, I can't. Like, yeah, trade your top two defensemen while you're chasing a cup. Exactly. I, I, that's, oh, that's one view. Of, like, why would you want to be – trade one of your core pieces as a contender it's because of the one mistake dude yeah that one mistake 3.8 seconds or something like that it's it's kind of funny though because if you think about it realistically like generalize the the playoffs in, in one thing so he gave the puck away once he chased once and he committed one penalty he made three mistakes in the playoffs in a total of what 10 yeah. games people look at the 11. icing and people look at the 3.8 seconds well what 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 did you learn from those three mistakes though the refs <laughs> He's not a repeat offender. Yeah. He won't do this stuff again. Like, there's a reason why he shaved his hair. I thought he said. was bald. I'm not going to lie. I thought, I thought he went bald. <laughs> no, just like back to his, like, his old pictures. Like you see him sit still on there on the NHL.com, just his old, you know, normal hair. I don't, I don't have emotional attachments to this team like a lot of people do. A lot of people grew up with Barkov. A lot of people grew up with Huberto. They saw them when they were like, you know, they're young teens and they saw them grow into these superstars that they are today. I don't have an emotional attachment to them. So when I see someone disappear in a playoff series, Barkov every year, Jonathan Huberdeau this year, Huberdeau didn't disappear last year. No, Huberdeau showed he was like up a last year. two point per game player. Yeah. Jonathan, who cares Huberdeau? Like, I don't have emotional attachments to this, this, this franchise that I think a lot of people do. Cause I believe when you're, when you're overly emotionally attached to this team, and you do see a mistake by a player, you're not going to forgive them, and you're going to tunnel vision on them. Yeah. But I guarantee you, we can look at Brandon Montour's game. We can look at Gudis's game. We can look at Forsling's game, and we can find the same things. There's a reason he's on the th third line, people. There's a reason Brandon Montour's not on the first line. Maybe Brandon Montour doesn't know his positioning. Maybe Brandon Montour gets beat too much. Maybe Brandon Montour pinches too much. Like, there's aspects of hockey that people don't consider. But that's not a stat. Failure to pinch improperly is not a stat in the NHL. Unless so it's not going to be highlighted. Yeah. 
I mean, even if they do score against yeah, you, it's, it's not, like, not, it's not like a safe field of pinch. Yeah, it's like, you just like get FTT. a minus one. Yeah. yeah, like it's just ridiculous. Um, yeah, people be more optimistic, it. people. That's all Honestly, I'm asking you. Be more I, I, optimistic. Exactly. Like people are giving up on this team, and as you said, we lost a third line winger who might not even be able to repeat what he did this season. You're talking about a He's guy not who gonna repeat it. I know. He's going to have worse line mates. Sure, he may have Sagan or Ben, but I don't even think so. I think he'll be on the third line. That and lineup talking, only works because Lundell, Lundell and, and Reinhardt, Reinhardt took who's, all the attention away. I know. Reinhardt had a top five Panther season ever. Like You're talking about the top fifth best Panther ever. Forward. It's, just, it's just like that one game that Ryan Lomberg played with Carter oh, Verhage and Barkov. That was awesome. who, do they, who do they cover? You cover Barkov, if you cover Verhage, who the hell cares about this Ryan Lomberg kid? It's the same thing in that line. Exactly. See this one it's two kid. dudes. Yeah. He was about, he's about to win the Calder, right? Yeah. Not the, I, I get my trophies mixed up. Please Calder, don't. yeah. Excuse We're good here. He, he was about to win the Calder, looking hot. Anton Lundell, Sam yes, Reinhardt, he he's a first-line player. And so it's like these guys take the target, and they're like, well, who's the other idiot on the line? Oh, a fourth-line bum? Like the amount of attention that's drawn, the amount of times that Sam Reiner got double, even triple yeah. teamed on that line, Easily. is ridiculous. Like he, you always see him behind the net fighting for that puck. You know, Lundell's usually by the by the circle, and Marchman's open. But Marchman is a smart player. There's no denying he's made some great plays. I remember he's a, he's a tough player too. He's, it's it's going to hurt to miss him, but it's not the end of the world. It's not going to cost you the Stanley Cup. It's not costing us forty points, people. We're not yeah. missing the playoffs. Stop it. Yeah. And I guess maybe to wrap it all up, what are your overthought overall thoughts on the Panthers? Just wait and see. That's my overall thoughts. Just wait and see, have faith, be positive. Don't tell players to off themselves on Twitter and maybe they won't deactivate their accounts. Looking at you, Bobrovsky fans. Um, that's about it. Yeah. I'm excited. Excited to, excited to see what Mo Cheesy can do with this roster. I was pessimistic at first, and then I remembered, oh, crap, we have an actual NHL coach now. That maybe, helps, yeah. Maybe we should be more positive. Maybe we'll not go one for 27 <laughs> on the power play. We'll see. Oh. It, it, yeah, it hurts. We'll see. Thank you so much, Steve, for joining. And uh, how would you? How could the, pan, the fans find you? Don't find me. They'll find you. Oh, yeah. He'll, he's <laughs> everywhere, trust me. He's on every live stream. Every live stream <laughs> chat. You can look at Twisted Wrist or you can look at the – he was on Hockey Nation Live Show last night. You can look at Hot Take Hockey. He, he's everywhere. Everyone, make sure you subscribe, like the video, 